Hi, Peter with you again today and today's subject is mindful listening, especially in an argument where we have a tendency to want to fire back to the other person. You know, you've been in a situation, I'm sure, where the arguments are going back and forth and you're not really getting anywhere. Well, this is often the case in arguments and sometimes the best way to counteract this is to just hold your tongue no matter how difficult it is and listen to the other person. Not only that, you need to respond in a way which makes them feel like they're being understood. Now, the reason behind this is when people are being antagonistic, often there's something underlying that antagonism. You've heard the saying that if someone is uh, being destructive or whatever, it's a call for help. Well, often I've found in arguments, there's a level of, a level of hurt underneath that person that is arguing and often that hurt has nothing to do with the argument that you're having at the moment but they're using the argument as a way of uh, sounding out their frustration so you're not going to get anywhere even if you win the argument because the person is still hurting and they'll just find another opportunity to argue with you you know the next day or whatever so by mindfully listening and if you can, sort of inquiring into what is the deepest level of hurt that person is going through, you can often get to the real issue. And once that issue is overcome, then you'll find that arguments will be less. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is I saw on the TV um, a little while ago an excellent example of this on an ABC program called Making Families Happy. And I've recorded that uh, for you to have a look at to see what you think. I hope you enjoy it and you get as much out of it as I do. Well, sometimes we can talk about things that, um, that we're upset about a bit easier. We can access that. Is, how would you feel about talking about something that you're upset about? Definitely don't want to do that. It'd be nice though if you could say something without worry of it turning into like a massive argument that's going to last weeks. If you could just say something that you're upset about without worry of that. Yes. Off you go. My biggest thing that I want to talk to you about it's that time when the police got cornered me. That's my biggest thing that I've just not been able to work on in my head. We didn't speak about it after. And then to never understand why my parents done that to me. Sucks. None of that would have happened if we talked. And that's what kills me so much because that's all I ever wanted. And instead, <laughs> I didn't feel like you cared or thought about it all. Anything like that, I just fucking brushed it off and you just went along like everything was normal. And that's been my biggest hurt. I'll give you an explanation why on my side. Because I'm frightened of the reaction. It's likewise, I'm frightened of your reaction too. The reason why I escalated to that point on that day got to the point where it had to stop. It had to stop hitting me with things and you had to learn that it's unacceptable to do that to anyone. Well, not just that it's me. I mean, that, that night after that incident, you spent a lot of time down the police station and I spent the whole night up in the hospital having x-rays. Can I say something as well? I've got my anger because I've seen you do angry things too. Well, you didn't abuse us, but you did used to give us a hard time and give it to us big time when we were younger, big time. And I saw the same thing from my mum. Yeah. That's how you learn, and from my grandmother. You got a good hiding, you done something wrong, you got a good hiding. <laughs> and that evil circle keeps on going. Hey, I want to stop that stuff. That's what I don't get. Imagine that if I called the police on you, imagine if I'd done that to you. Okay. Now, the reason why I've jumped in is because where you were talking about that distressing event, 
and you did very well to listen. There was then a part where you started to go back and forth, yeah? It's the blame game, isn't it? It's the blame game. I've, this is the first time I have been able to even be heard about Mum going off like a psycho about yes. it. Yes, yes. But I'm still not being heard, and this is why she's getting stressy. I'm getting stressed because you're trying to blame, throw blame. It's not about blame, Ash. It's about how you feel. It's about how I feel. Yeah, and it absolutely broke my heart to the point where, I can honestly tell you, I stopped loving you at that point, and I had to bring it back because it hurt that much that my mother done that to me. And for the point of view that you didn't see it, I can honestly tell you that. Can I say I had that? hate no, for you. No, I didn't say anything, Kay. Just sit with it. Never been so hurt in my whole entire life. Give her a sense, Kate, that you understand what she's saying. Feedback what you've heard. <sighs> she felt that Mac and I were against her and that we didn't care. Just wanted to punish her. Is that how you feel? Oh my God, I felt alone and my whole family was against me. Alone. No one had your back. You felt left out, excluded. That's what I mean by parking the position. I know you want to give your side. But when we do that, we get into that gridlock. And this technique's about trying to get understanding, not right or wrong. Today was very difficult. It did really work because I do feel happier and a lot more at ease. And just knowing that we can talk like that now, I feel confident that mum will sit there and let me speak. There's no tension between me and Ashley, then everyone else sort of feels at ease. So that was the turning point, really.